morning, everybody. Welcome to a brand new and beautiful day. It is a gorgeous day out here in the Enchanted Forest. The sky is absolutely beautifully blue. The sun is shining and the winter snow is crisp. It's cold. I think when I last looked, it was 12 degrees here in the Enchanted Forest. It's nice and cozy in here, however, and uh, welcome to Exploring Sacred. The chat room is open. For those that wish to join in the chat room, please do. And I'm going to go ahead and post the welcome on Facebook. So bear with me as we do that. Okay. There we go. So this morning we're going to talk about, <clears throat> hey, Kimberly. Hi, Charlotte. It's good to see you ladies in the house. This morning we're going to talk about, you know, those times in life when spirit stirs within us and we're not quite sure why or what is being stirred or why we're being stirred and where it may lead us. We're going to talk about that today because it's that time of the year. Here in North America and uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, it is midwinter. It's midwinter. I think I use the Americanized term because I am here in North America. And midwinter is that time halfway between winter and spring. The time when I look out my window, I have a great window right here, and as I said, it's 12 degrees. Everything is blanketed with a gorgeous, pristine snow out in the forest, and it's very still. Except that the old ones remind us that deep within Grandmother Earth, everything is waking up. Everything is beginning to stir. And we know that all of the old teachers, the ancient teachers, the esoteric philosophers teach us that everything outside of us corresponds to what goes on within us. And that's something that our ancestors knew. It's something that they lived by. They understood. It was not even something that really they had to go out and remember or learn. It was part of the way that they were taught to live in harmony, in sync with nature. And so this is the season of stirring. Some people call it in bulk. There are lots of names for this time of the year. But it's the place of stirring. After we've had some time to settle in in the winter, maybe around a fire, maybe quiet, when we can catch quiet, those of you that have young children and very busy lives can catch glimpses of quiet. Sometimes we can feel something going on inside of us and perhaps even a pull, feeling as though there's a pull going on outside of us, leading us somewhere. It could be leading us somewhere outside of ourselves, or it could be that pull that wants to take us deep within a trip down memory lane, a time of reflection. It's an interesting time of the year. Kimberly is saying there is something magical about this time of year, especially when the sun is shining. I couldn't agree more, Kimberly. It's just gorgeous. Hey, Tracy Civic, Kelly Spencer, Rob Coulter, Angie Town, happy birthday to you, Angie. <laughs> Yesterday was Angie's birthday. Happy birthday, Ange. Great big hugs to you and Bruce. Hey, Katie Battle. Hey, Patty Herzberger. Oh, my goodness, what a great crew. Charlotte, it's good to have everybody here in the chat room this morning. And for those of you that are listening in, wherever you happen to be, good morning to you. Well, this morning, as I was getting ready for the show, 
I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to like draw a card from the new deck. The magical mystic angels. I love that word magic. I use it a lot more these days. And the card that I drew, it's a digital deck, so <clears throat> I went in and drew the card for everybody. And the Archangel Saint Raphael came up, the ruler of the second heaven. The Archangel Saint Raphael is softly inviting you to create a sacred space of healing for yourself, or perhaps another who is in need of restoration and peace. It's about going within for healing, for looking. One thing about the Archangel Saint Raphael, when we're talking about the mystical path and mystical allies, angelics, of course, are mystical allies. And Raphael, once I was blind and now I see, the beauty of Raphael is that he helps us to see where the blockage is, where the problem may lie. And the problem with Raphael is that he helps us to see where the blockage may be or the problem may lie. Right. Once I was blind and now I see. The conversion of Saul, Caravaggio's painting, all of these wonderful things crop up when I think about the Archangel Saint Raphael and healing and seeing. And oftentimes at this midwinter point, is when our soul, I believe anyway, this is just my perspective of life. For me, this is the time of the year when spirit has said, okay, I've given you a few weeks to sit a spell. Winter does that, the direction of the north. Winter, the direction of the Kaliak, the hag, the crone. And now that I've given you a little bit of time to sit, let's have a look-see. Are you ready to see? What is it that you want to see? A lot of times we keep ourselves busy, don't we, so that we don't have to see? And a lot of people who are seers and sensitives, modern-day mystics, also numb themselves with all sorts of things that we can numb ourselves with. Alcohol, drugs, shopping, gambling, right? Whatever it is that takes us away from feeling so much. For those of you that are empaths and seers and sensitives, you know what I'm talking about. We have a propensity toward that. We have to be mindful of it because we're so in tune and attuned to being able to feel and to sense and to see not only what's within ourselves, but every stinking living thing that's around us. How do we know when spirit is stirring for us when we're one of those people? Where do you feel that stirring? Where do you get that sense of, okay, I need to take a look at that. I really didn't want to go down this left you know, path I just wanted to stay on the path I'm on, doggone it. But there's something inside me telling me that I've got to go left. I just wanted to stay on the path. I just wanted to do the same old, same old because it's safe. And it's better to know the devil that you do know than one that you don't. And yet there's a stirring, right? It's like that little styrofoam cup when we're little in school. And you put the bean in there, right? You put it in the window. So I did that anyway. And you watch that thing grow. The stirring is like that. And I think the stirring is different when we know it's something for us versus one of our clients or someone that we love, that we care for, is because it hits us, it stirs us typically, not always, this is just me, in my heart center, my high heart center, my solar plexus. Something is rattling around in there. Yep, the fear of change, of the unknown. Isn't that the biggest one at this time of the year? Thank you for that, Katie. Midwinter, the stirring. The buds out in the enchanted forest. I have hundreds of bulbs planted 
all over the School of Sacred Studies grounds and out in the forest. I love it. They're stirring, I'm stirring. And I feel it in my heart chakra, my high heart, my solar plexus. And oftentimes the stirring, when we want to pay attention to it and not numb ourselves to it. I think the numbing has a lot to do with trying to keep out everybody else's stuff or trying to keep out spirit. I do believe that that can be the case for many, right? We uh, have a tendency to want to block out all of that excess energy from everybody else's stuff or the stuff that spirit is made of. And so what happens is that we can numb ourselves to the degree that we can't even really feel our own stirring on the inside. And so the stirring then becomes what some affectionately call the cosmic two by four because <laughs> we're numb to the stirring. So it has to come in the big, you know, <laughs> crack of lightning. It's good to sit with that little bean sprout when it starts to stir within you. And for some, sitting is not easy. And so I validate that. I know for some of you, actually sitting, being still, is not easy. So this is what happens when spirit stirs within us and we don't have the capacity to sit still. I've been told more than once that I'm like a whirling dervish. And Todd, well, his Indian name is Wamini Yumini, which means um, whirlwind. So we're kind of like that. I think I'm a little, I can find myself in, in quiet space a lot easier than he. But the point of all of that is, is that we can be really busy as people, as part of our nature. Some people can sit all day like the great Buddha Hote and just take in information and decipher it and commune with, with spirit. I'm not one of those. So if you're not one of those either, if you're not one of those either, the dream time becomes really enchanted, active, perhaps overactive. Spirit will speak to us in the quiet moments. Spirit likes to speak to me while I'm doing dishes or folding laundry, when I'm dusting the house, dusting and polishing off the furniture. People will say to me, you know, your house is like a museum. It's like you live in a museum. Because I, I collect a lot of artifacts, as many of you know. Can't, how do you stand dusting all of that stuff? Well, my answer to that is one of my greatest meditations is a good old can of pledge and an old fashioned baby diaper. Baby diapers, the old cloth kind. Baby diapers and a can of pledge are like sacred ceremony <laughs> for me. They have a really good and long meditation and think about. Because my mind, the busy mind, the business mind, all that mind is aside and I'm doing something. I'm keeping the body busy and spirit begins to speak. I have these flashes of thought. I have these flashes of pictures in my mind. Hey, what about that? Well, what if you go there? Well, I don't know. If I go there, then what happens over that way? Well, if you go there, then what over what happens over that way could look like this. Oh, I have these great long conversations, dusting off the bookshelves, etc., polishing the crystals, what have you. And when I'm done with that, if there's more to come, I know that in my dream time, spirit is going to con continue the conversation. It always amazes me the way that spirit will let us know with a gentle stirring, the cosmic thwack, a bolt of lightning, 
And if we're not getting it, we're not getting the message, the chatter continues on relentlessly. I'm not one of those people that can continue to live with the chatter relentlessly. Some people can, you know, 30 years ago I thought about that, you know, for 30 years Spirit's been telling me I need to, I think that usually has to do with the fear of change. Um, I don't believe that we're meant to stay in one place, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. For me, I believe that we, we've come here to do some excavation, to have some adventure, to explore, to test the limits of what we were taught as children. That's a good one, to test those limits. In comes Dominic, just in time to torment Gabriel. Hey, Sonia. Hey, Tara. Carla Joe. <laughs> Father Joe <laughs> Fix. I heard it said by Father Joe <laughs> Fix, if you're not growing, you're not learning. <laughs> love Father Joe. Yeah, Father <laughs> Joe is the bee's knees. I'm telling you, I love Father Joe. Hey, Donna King. Okay, Gabe. <clears throat> That's right. If you're not if you're not learning, you're not living. Hey, Maggie. Welcome to the chat room. So these stirrings happen, and sometimes, frankly, you don't know where they're going to lead. And I I do believe sometimes we're not supposed to know. Sometimes I think that we're supposed to just experience some surprises. I know that there are some people that like to have everything planned out. I'm not one of those people. I love a good surprise. And so have you ever done the old journey down the rabbit hole with spirit? Wow. And what about the idea that when spirit is stirring within us, it's like a magnet. That little bean <laughs> that I'm describing in the styrofoam cup in Mrs. White's classroom in Alexandria, Virginia, when I guess I was in like second or third grade, I don't remember. That little bean of divine inspiration, that, that stirring, is magnetic to me. What do I mean by that? Well, sometimes we can think that we're doing a fine job of following the path. Okay, I'm supposed to go left, I'll go left. Oh, 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 I guess I'm supposed to backtrack and go right. And then we don't know what to do. Well, that little magnetic stirring within us also draws to us the path. Because sometimes we can get muddled. We can be afraid of change. I think that that's, you know, a natural part of living is the fear of change. It can be. I grew up with change. I only know change. I don't know what it's not like to have constant change. But for many, change is difficult. I honor that. So what spirit will do, if we're not paying attention to the signs, if you don't get great meditations when you're dusting, maybe you don't even dust, I don't know. And maybe your dreams are cloudy and it's not coming through that way. Spirit isn't over trying to get us and our attention. Spirit will bring to us, and who do I mean by spirit anyway? That's kind of a vast subject. Who is spirit? Who is the, who is this spirit that she's talking about? Well, for me, spirit is so multi-layered and multi-dimensional and vast. 
So for me, when I talk about spirit, I am referring to the light of my soul. The light of my soul, that place of grace, that light within my soul, that grace that is connected to the infinite intelligence of creator, Wakantanka, and it's connected. And if I'm not getting the clues and I'm not getting the hints or I'm just going to be stubborn about it, spirit will bring it to me. Here, look at this, feel it, taste it, step in it. Have you ever had that happen? Spirit brings it to you. Yesterday, I was having this great conversation with my sister, Del Marie. She called me, and we were just giggling and chatting. And she was talking about uh, a person that she has met that was also, uh, who was also an adopted person from Georgia, who was uh, displaced from his family in the Dakotas. And, you know, the way in which he found him himself, you know, connecting with her. And we had this great conversation about the Tunkashulas. And Del, if you're on and you're listening, please chime in. Get in the chat room, sissy poo. And we talked about the way that, you know, we can feel something stirring, like the, this person said to her, I knew something was different. I knew that there was more. My dreams was telling me that there was more. And pretty soon the dream, because the dream state itself is alive. That is a place. It is a dimension. It is a state of being. It's a state of being. We have so many states of being. And our soul is aware of all of them, I believe. If we in our physical consciousness are not aware of all of these states of being, the soul says, I'm going to bring clues to you. I'm going to bring your path to your doorstep. I'm going to bring it to the doorstep. And the great thing about spirit is that it's kind of tenacious. But let's just have a little for instance. Perhaps for somebody, the path of joy is something that's been long sought after. I'm, I'm looking for the path of joy. And maybe this person has never known joy. Doesn't even know really how to feel it because it's not been an experience. But there's a longing, a search, a quest for joy. The soul is aware of that longing, that quest, and that search. And in our humanness, not really knowing what that means or exactly how to interpret joy, spirit will bring joy to the front door. And if you've never experienced joy, when the doorbell rings and you answer the door and it's joy standing on the threshold of your door to your home, your interior castle, and you don't recognize it, you're going to shut the door probably or peep out the peephole and go, oh, that doesn't look familiar to me. I'm not answering that door. Or you do answer the door, you invite it in and you go, oh, this just doesn't feel right to me. That's how spirit also works. And when those stirrings happen, when the stirring is magnetically the physicality of the stirrings brought to your door, <clears throat> literally or metaphorically speaking, I say to people, well, rather than to just slam the door shut, Rabbi Label Wolf says we can't really ever shut the door anyway, leave it open a little crack. Bring it in by increments, bits and pieces. Let it flow gently. I think joy is at my door. And um, I've never experienced joy. Therefore, I'm going to let it in, but I'm going to ask that it come into my interior castle. It, it join me on the path in a way that's gentle. 
that's meant for me. I'm not really sure about the idea of magic in my life. What is that? Mysticism in my life. I'm not really sure about that. But I have opportunities now to learn. And I'm going to leave the door slightly ajar. And I'm going to invite it in slowly. Gently. Not all at once. Tracy is saying... At one point, or I live by bits and pieces because Nellie taught me the importance of that. Yeah, good. Old, oh, I love Nellie, right? Who doesn't love Nellie? That's right, Tracy. Bits and pieces, just gently, especially if it's challenging your balance, right? When the stirring challenges your balance, that Natalie Merchant song, right? Oh, God, I love that. <laughs> I'm a challenge to your balance is the stanza. I'm a challenge to your balance. I love Natalie Merchant. If it challenges your balance or the balance of the people around you, wise advice that Mervyn Kelly gives in bits and pieces. Integrate it, Donna is saying. Oh my, oh mercy, my life. At one point in life, my mantra was change is bad. Thankfully, no longer the case. That, well, thank goodness for that, Carla Jo Wood. Yeah. Taking a leap of faith is not always easy. Yeah. When the stirring comes, and ultimately you can say no because we are here on the in the, having this experience of opportunity to make choices. Um, but as I often say, at least in my head, and maybe I share it out loud. Sometimes I'm not sure if I'm just been if I've just been sharing things inside my own head, or if I've actually let them slip through my lips and go outward. But you know, at the end of our days, at the end of our days, when we're on the flip side of the coin, looking back or through, it's not really back, when we're looking through that vibration of that keeps us somewhat separated between physicality and non-physicality. For myself, I do not wish to look through the lens and say, I wish I would have. I wish I woulda. I want to be able, my goal is to be able to say, I'm so glad I, I took that leap. Sometimes, everybody, we're not taking the leap just for ourselves. Sometimes, y'all, we're taking the leap for a whole lot of other people. When Sister Irene Mary McDonald said to me, Denise, you've got to write a book for Catholics, I said, oh, Lord, Sister, <laughs> um, what do you mean I need to write a book for Catholics? Well, she was talking as a Catholic nun, so, you know. Well, she said, Catholics, for the most part, have forgotten the mystical side of the tradition. I think you need to write a book. Oh, I said. She said, well, if you write the book, I will help to edit it. Angie, you know Sister Irene Mary. I think, wasn't she one of your teachers at Catholic Central? And so my leap of faith at that time, and this was a moment in my life where the, the trajectory of my life absolutely changed. And I went into the newsroom at the newspaper and I brought together some of my favorite writers, some of the columnists. And I said, look, everybody, you all know me and I know you. And I would like, if you would, to sit on an editorial board for me and a project that has been brought to me. Well, what's the project, Denise? Writing a book, and I'm going to entitle it Embracing the Mystic Within. Well, this is a group of journalists. <laughs> they looked at me, and they said, well, that's something different. 
Okay, we're in. And for, you know, every week for a great good long time, we all got together about the direction of the book. Where it should go. I had one of the, uh, back in the day in, in the newsroom, we used to have a staff of artists. Incredibly gifted human beings. Oh my goodness. Of course, that was back in the day when my friend Joel Carrier was our fashion columnist. Anyway, I asked one of my favorite editorial artists if he would create the cover for the book, and he looked at me and he said, no, I'm a Christian. We don't talk about mysticism in Christianity. And I honored that. And um, I said, you mean in your brand of Christianity? And he said, well, yeah. But, you know, you Catholics are a different lot, and I'm certain that you will find an artist willing to create the cover for your book. And that's when I reached out to a woman by the name of Wendy Mersman. So in the first few of my books, you, you, you see her artwork throughout the books. That was a leap of faith. It changed the trajectory of my life. And even in that moment of rejection, it wasn't even a rejection. I looked at it as him honoring his path without dishonoring mine. And it led me to the next, which was a great relationship with a fantastic artist at Moon Designs in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It was the leap, and it changed the course and the, tra the trajectory. And I didn't just do it for myself. Sometimes we're asked to veer left or go through the roundabout for ourselves and others. That was quite a while ago when that, that book was released. <laughs> Angie's saying, yes, she was my English teacher. She is awesome. She is awesome. I dedicated my book, A Year of Mystic Angels, A Year of Mystic Angels to Sister Irene McDonald. Irene Mary McDonald changed my life. It's amazing that when the stirring is magnetized, the people that show up in our lives, it is astonishing. Astonishing. Hey, Nikki. Me either. I've already been there one too many times. Wish I, I typically don't do that anymore. Yeah. The stirring. Yesterday, Del Marie and I were chit-chatting about a whole lot of stuff, as we typically do, from her beadwork. She's doing some great beadwork. Um, to, you know, why it is that some people are born into this lifetime. Why is it that some people are born in this lifetime to immediately be taken away from their biological family? What's, what's that journey or to be, you know, removed from? I said, well, it's just part of the journey, Del. I believe it's part of the journey. That's all. Part of the journey. And why? Why do any of those things happen for any of us? I mean, we've all lived extraordinary lives, each and every one of us. And what was it within us that made us decide to do this rather than that, or this and that? And what was it within us that made us finally decide and execute the hard choices, the difficult ones? Boy, there's a stirring that's not easy, is it? When you know you have a difficult choice to make, and not only make the choice, but to execute it, boy, they, whoo, lordy. Hey, Patty Hersberger. So many things to comment on during this. It could be a book. I'm taking notes. Pieces are being woven together, says Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte. <laughs> 
Tracy. Yes, it was a great message from the chalice well, bits and pieces, and to let things simply unfold, very organic. Yes, just like the bulbs underneath the earth at this time. Some people force bulbs. I'm talking metaphorically. For me, I've learned, let it unfold. Todd will say, how come you're so quiet? You're really quiet about all this. And I will say, I am watching it all unfold. I'm observing, contemplating, watching it all unfold. Or I'm watching it all fall apart to be consciously and awake and aware to how it can all be pieced back together again. Or maybe not all of the pieces. Sometimes the stirring leads to the falling apart, the tower. We've all had the tower experience. Poof, there goes the house of cards. Crap. And I'm not a person who runs around like a chicken with my head cut off over things. The Sarge taught me that. He was so good in emergency situations, right? He'd get rattled about other stuff, but great in an emergency. I'm one of those people that when the tower comes a-visiting, the tower crumbles, I watch. And I also think that comes with age, quite frankly. Really. And, you know, it is true that in my lifetime, the net has always appeared from the minute I was born. It's always appeared. Oh my gosh, last night I was laying in bed. And, you know, for some, you know, I see spirit all the time, but I looked at the end of my bed and there was my, my dad, Billy King, was standing at the foot of my bed. And <laughs> he was wearing like a flannel shirt, like that kind of, like, like flannel. I don't know if he wore flannel shirts, but it was kind of that kind of flannelly pattern, I guess, would be the way. And anyway, I looked at him and I said, hey, daddy-o, what, what's, up, what's up, Billy King? Why the visit? And he looked at me and he just simply said, go with the flow of the changes, baby. Just go with the flow of the changes. Just allow the changes. I said, okay. And, and he was gone. I know what he's talking about. <clears throat> it was a confirmation and affirmation. And the reason I bring it up is because sometimes when we have those stirrings and we don't know if they're for really, really real, <clears throat> even though everything around us tells us, yep, this, yep, that's the way to go. The scarecrow and the Wizard of Oz, that this way or that way. Those we love that have passed on, and Gabriel's getting ready to howl, so... Those that we love that have passed on will come to visit us to affirm those stirrings, to help us with them. To help get us through. They'll come to us in our dreams. They'll come to us in our daydreams, our imaginings. Or, just like my daddy, Billy King, he was there last night standing at the foot of the bed. Now, Todd can't see spirit the way that I do, so it's not really an intrusion for him. <clears throat> so the conversation was very personal. Ultimately, when the stirring happens... Here's what I say to myself, Dana, what's the worst thing that could happen? 
What's the worst thing that could happen? Now, my good friend Darlene has always accused me of <clears throat> being one of those people that's really not afraid of much and will take a leap into just about anything. She is a Taurus, so she's more measured, like Todd. They're more measured about things. I am Scorpio, 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 so we just go, okay, let's dive in. Now, I'm not going to dive in the shallow end. I'm not like that. But, yeah, come on, Tara, let's go to Egypt. Tara, let's go to Egypt and you and I will be roomies, right? And Tara's like, okay. So Tara and I were roomies in Egypt. All right, yeah, let's do that. Okay, what's the worst thing that could happen? That's how I kind of have learned to balance the stirring. Let me have a look. <clears throat> a message from St. Gabriel awaiting the Annunciation. A crazy quilt instead of a nine square, yeah. Donna saying, wish I could do that, tend to make a fuss at what I perceive to be maybe a negative thing at the time. Oh, yeah, that's just part of our human nature, isn't it? <laughs> Tara's saying, I'm ready. Tara and I have traveled around the world together. Well, Nikki and I have traveled around the world together, too. <clears throat> Tara, Nikki and I have traveled around the world together, <clears throat> as a matter of fact. <laughs> Well, and Maggie and I have traveled to Ireland together. Oh, that's the gypsy soul. Donna, you know what I'm talking about there. These stirrings, these promptings are the voice of spirit. And again, for me, that's my soul and the grace, that light in the soul. It's the light of grace. The light of grace. And I don't want to miss out on any cool stuff. And again, at the end of my days, I want to be able to look back and go, holy crap, I did go to Egypt. Not everybody wants to go to Egypt. So this is, you know, me speaking for me. I had to go once, I had to go twice. I know I'll be back again. Holy smokes. Did I really do that? You've got to be kidding me. All righty then. At the end of this life, I want to go home with a capital H full of this life. Contributing to it. Not being a bystander, but being a contributor to it in some way. <laughs> Woo! And I know you all feel the same way. But this is the season for that. That's the reason for today's show. This is the season for that. Midwinter in America. I, oh, another person I had a great conversation with yesterday was Catherine Skaggs, the artist. She got a hold of me and she said, oh my God, I miss you. Let's do some work together. She's over in Colorado. She's got a great book coming out, and she, you know, wanted wondered if I would have a look at the manuscript and, you know, give her my thoughts about it and thumbs up or thumbs down. And we got to talking about putting ourselves out there. And then we got to talking about putting ourselves out there in the uncomfortable places. And then we got to talking about why it is we meet people. And then we got to talking about why it is that some of us, you know, listening to spirit is so important. Walking with spirit is so important. And then we got to talking about this time of the year in North America, midwinter, and the traditions of midwinter, and how do we as Americans incorporate ancestral traditions into our own personal American, not Native American, American tradition? How do we draw that in? How does somebody like me and my cousin Donna, 
who are predominantly Scottish, we'll just say Celtic, Afro-Celtic, with a wee bit of Seminole and Cherokee tossed into the mix. How does, how does somebody like Donna and I, who are Celtic, Afro, American indigenous, how do we bring that home and, and make a tea out of that? How do we do that? Can we do it? Is it allowed? Will we get in trouble for that? What would the establishment say if we blend Celto, Celtic Afro native spirituality into our own blend? What if we take only one of those paths and it's the path less seen? I was watching a comedian last night on TV with Todd and his mother is Peruvian. He speaks fluent Spanish and he met a woman at one of his shows who said, but you look like a white guy. And he said, so you don't think white people live in Spain? You don't think that white looking people live in Mexico? You don't think that white looking people live in Peru? It's part of this time that we're living in is getting over that, the shades of skin and into the colors of soul. Out of the shades of skin and into the colors of soul we go. And no mystic is complete without a sense of humor. No mystic is complete without a, without a sense of humor. So how do we bring that home? That's what Catherine and I were talking about. <laughs> Donna says, oh, I love <laughs> the less seen path. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, the dog doth magnify the Lord. Yeah, he's something, that Gabriel. He's looking at me. Whenever an ambulance goes by, I trained him when he was a puppy that when an ambulance goes by, we pray for those that are driving the ambulance and for those that they're going to see. And that we ask the angels of light and healing and the light of the beloved to be with them, to keep them safe, et cetera, et cetera. And so I say that, and I invited him to howl. So whenever an ambulance goes by, that is Gabriel's form of prayer, is to howl while I say silently my prayer. So, yeah. So there we have it, everybody. It's the season of stirring. Pay attention to your dreams, your daydreams, your nocturnal dreams. Pay attention to who it is that shows up at your front door. Who is it that's going to come a-calling? Pay attention. Discern. You don't have to chew it in one great big bite. Small bites, increments, that are suitable for you, to your path, that are amenable to your soul. And remember to give gratitude. Even the light of grace likes a great big thank you every so often, or a little thank you. With that, everybody, next up at the 11 a.m. hour is my dear friend, Terry Ruel, psychotherapist extraordinaire, who's going to do part two of why don't they say, see it like I see it? Why do people, why is it that people don't see things the same way that I do? Isn't that a great question? I think that that's probably, if you're here in the United States, or well, maybe around the world, you're thinking, what is going on in the United States? And we all have our thoughts and opinions about that. And sometimes we wonder, what's the matter with that person? They don't see it like I do. I've got to be right. <laughs> right? Well, the Sarge used to have a saying about opinions, but that's not for today. With that, everybody, have a great, beautiful day. And up next is... Terry Ruel. Blessings be everybody. Get out there and shine as only you can shine. <laughs>